This is number three ranked competitive eater and world record holder Matt Megatoad Stoney. In 2015, he scarfed down 62 hot dogs in 10 minutes to defeat eight time defending champion Joey Chestnut. In 2019, ESPN reported that Stoney held 14 world records, which included devouring 113 pancakes in 8 minutes, 28 and a half gyros in 5 minutes, and one burrito zilla in 1 minute and 50 seconds. So, how does he do it? An average human stomach can expand up to 12 inches long, 6 inches wide, and hold about 1 to 2 liters, or 2 to 5 pounds of food, before triggering the nausea reflex. Competitive eaters train to bypass this gag reflex and stretch their stomach capacities to double or triple that of an average person. A study from 2007 took photo scans of a competitive eater's stomach before, during, and after he ate 36 hot dogs. Before eating, the stomach looked small, wrinkly, and about the size of a clenched fist. The stomach expanded to take up most of the inner stomach cavity and was found to be able to handle an almost unlimited amount of food. In the weeks leading up to a contest, number 10 ranked eater, Michelle Lesko, trains by consuming foods and liquids in a way that helps stretch her stomach. That includes things like chugging a gallon of chocolate milk or four liters of pop in just a few minutes. Chronic overeating helps loosen her stomach and allows her to consume food without having to wait for her stomach to expand. She says the difference between eating with a properly stretched stomach and an untrained one is like pouring sand into a bucket instead of into a deflated balloon. Godfather of competitive eating, Takeru Kobayashi used to train for hot dog eating championships by stretching his stomach with gallons of water before a tournament. Matt Stoney himself has boasted about having a stomach capacity between 16 and 20 pounds and can pack away up to 10,000 calories a day while preparing for a contest. It's no surprise then that he's crushed some of the heaviest meals legally available in the United States, from giant sandwiches to 14 and a half pound birthday cakes to over 20 pounds of pumpkin pie. His YouTube channel boasts an impressive 11 million subscribers and features new challenges like the epic chili cheese fries and his 20,000 calorie Super Bowl challenge. Yet despite his portfolio of world records, championships, and eating challenges, Stoney's greatest and most mind-boggling feat is how he's been able to maintain a slender 130-pound physique throughout his 10-year eating career. He isn't the only one to do something like this, either. Standing at 5'8", the same height as Matt, six-time hot dog eating champion Takeru Kobayashi had an ideal competition weight of 132 pounds. Previously mentioned, number 10 ranked eater Michelle Lesko stands at 5'4 and weighs 112 pounds. Nine inches taller at 6'1, number 1 ranked eater Joey Chestnut maintains an acceptable weight for his height at 230 pounds. In fact, if you look at most competitive eaters, they tend to be in relatively decent shape. So, how can these professional eaters get away with ingesting so much food without putting on a ton of weight? It's not that they don't gain weight, they do. And a lot of it too. Stoney confessed that he can gain up to 20 pounds after a single competition. The thing is, most of these added pounds are a result of water weight and can be shed in just a few days. As for the rest of it, Stoney told GQ he hits the gym five times a week and his diet in between challenges couldn't be any blander. Think chicken breasts, salmon, kale, asparagus, broccoli, and spinach. Not to beat a dead horse, but it looks like diet and exercise is the straightforward answer. But is it really that simple? Why do some people struggle to lose weight even after serious dieting and exercise regimens, only for it to come surging back? Meanwhile, others can binge eat while managing to remain at healthy weight levels? Most people's gut reaction is to blame genetics. Some people just have faster metabolisms than others. While true, Stoney and many other pro eaters have openly admitted to having average metabolisms. Let me explain. Most people see dieting and weight loss as a simple equation of calories in and calories out. 
Why does Jeff Bezos have so much money? Because he earned more money than he spent. Why did the Raptors win the NBA Finals? Because they scored more points than the Warriors. God damn it, Pete. Why are you fat? Why is Pete fat? The obvious answer is that more calories went into Pete's body than out. During competition week, number 13 ranked eater Adam Beard Meets Food Morin eats less food during the days leading up to and after a tournament. Let's say Adam has to eat 3,000 calories a day to maintain his current weight. If he eats more than 3,000 calories a day, Adam gains weight. If he eats less, he loses weight. That means over 7 days or 1 week, Adam has to eat 21,000 calories just to maintain his current weight. If he goes to a competition and eats 12,000 calories on Wednesday, then he can eat fewer calories during the rest of the week. Calories in, calories out. Simple, right? Unfortunately, the reason why so many find this explanation unsatisfying is because it doesn't cover the entire picture. When your body is properly fed, it will not choose to store extra fat, nor will it give you cravings. It's not just about how much you eat, but what you eat too. To make the fattest, juiciest steaks, cattle farmers tend to feed their livestock high amounts of corn and grain products instead of grass. Sumo wrestlers are humans who intentionally try to get fat. An analysis of the diet and lifestyle of sumo wrestlers in training by the Sugahara Institute revealed they were eating up to 15,000 calories a day and were getting two times more carbs than they were fat or protein. Excess carbohydrates increase fat in the body. This information isn't new. In 1797, Scottish military surgeon John Rollo successfully treated a diabetes patient with a low-carb diet. In 1977, the USDA put out new dietary recommendations, widely known as the Food Pyramid, that cut fat and replaced it with heart-healthy grains, starches, breads, pastas, and other carbs. If you pull up any graphs on obesity trends, you can see a very noticeable uptick around that year, eventually leading up to the USA's current obesity problem. So why do carbs lead to fat gain? Insulin is known as the fat storage hormone. Where there's insulin, there's fat. When you eat carbs, your blood sugar level rises. This triggers insulin to be released in the blood. Insulin carries the sugar from your blood and into other cells that process sugar into energy. This is why athletes can experience improved performance and energy after a pregame meal rich in carbohydrates. In the form of glycogen, you can store about 200 grams of glucose or sugar in the muscle and 70 grams in the liver. After glucose storage in the muscles and liver cells becomes full, the body does not want glucose overloading the cells, so it closes off these areas to prevent more insulin and glucose from getting in. Then, glucose is broken down and stored in the only place where insulin is still being accepted, fat cells. When you have high insulin levels in your blood from eating too many carbs, you cannot break down fat. Insulin blocks the enzyme that allows you to burn fat, hormone-sensitive lipase. So then, the insulin in your blood won't let you use fat for energy, so you're low on energy until you get new glucose. This causes you to become hungry and to crave food. Even though your body is holding on to so much fat, it can't use it. It's not that people get fat because they want to eat all the time. They want to eat all the time because they are getting fat. This is the same reason why overweight people struggle to find the energy to exercise, yet have increasing appetites. Their chronically high insulin levels block their bodies from making use of their biggest energy source, fat. So how do we avoid this problem? One obvious answer is to simply decrease the amount of carbs you consume. But the other and more enjoyable way is to simply consume high fiber carbohydrates instead. You see, most man-made grains like refined cereals, pastas, pancakes, and crackers are low in fiber, but high in carbs. 
but natural carbs like sweet potato, quinoa, and chickpeas, along with a variety of fruits and vegetables, can give you the carbohydrate boost you need without worrying about fat gain. That's because fiber reduces insulin response, preventing most, if not all, of the problems listed above. Ancient hunter-gatherers ate tougher, juicier fruits and ingested 100 to 300 grams of fiber a day. Whereas today, the average is somewhere around 15 grams. If you notice the everyday diets of most competitive eaters, aside from a few cheat meals and the odd competition, their meals are generally healthy, balanced, and full of whole foods. And if you look at them at the start of their careers, they already tended to be in pretty decent shape. That is their secret. Before they started competing, their bodies had already formed good calorie burning habits due to a healthy diet and lifestyle. Once they began taking on food challenges, their bodies simply adjusted to the increased calories. If you feed and care for your body properly, it will regulate consumption for you. In the 1960s, Ethan Sims took prisoners from Vermont State Prison and tried to overfeed them with either carbs or fat on top of their normal diet. He could get them to eat over 7,000 calories in carbs per day, but getting them to eat just 800 calories of fat, or one stick of butter, was almost impossible. It takes willpower to overeat if you are on the right diet, but it takes even more willpower to not overeat if you're on the wrong diet. Ironically, competitive eaters are a great example of why moderation in the diet is essential. In the long run, they never let their weight fluctuate too far either way. They eat what they like, and they eat mostly healthy foods. They allow themselves cheat days, they diet gradually and slowly ramp up to prepare for competitions. So, what diet is best for you? The one that you enjoy the most is generally pretty healthy, and most importantly, one that you can maintain for a long time. What food do you most like to pig out on? Let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.